Welcome to Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's the 17th of January. Um, let's go through our topics. We've got news, the changelog PR. Uh, yes, and that is not just a question mark. That's a yes, we need to do it. And I then your last time I put this in and you, it was like you thought that I wanted this to be the first stuff and I wanted to make sure you got all your other stuff in first. Yeah, and, and I think I, I think we owe it to ourselves to do the weekly change log very first one because it's a relatively contained task. And if we don't do it, um, then we've got a much bigger task when the release happens tomorrow morning. Absolutely. And then open pull requests. And we could probably talk briefly about the uh, improve a plugin tutorial. But it's basically say no progress in the last week. Have we oh, got we a should... plan for how we could start releasing pieces of that? Because there's some oh, I, pieces I, that are ready to go, or is that not going to be? Yeah, I, I think we. It's just a matter of of the work, the work that's there is finish the piece that's ready and publish it. Absolutely. Okay. All right, so she code Africa contribute on. I still need to uh, next steps. So that's a talk to it. Uh, and yeah, I, th I think those are the, the, the topics. Anything else from you, Meg? Nope, I don't think so. Okay, great. So, and welcome to Diraj. He's joining us. That's great. Hey, Diraj. Thanks for joining, Diraj. Hello, everyone. Thank you. So, we were just reviewing agenda. Are there any agenda topics you needed to add, Diraj? Um, I think I do, but I'm wondering whether uh, discussing technical things in Docs Office Hour would be a great idea or not. It is a good idea. We've done it. We've done. We've on a in the past spent entire the entire docs office hours right. on one or two technical topics. So if you've got technical questions, let's let's answer them. Yes. So uh, it would be around uh, require upper bound depths error. Oh. So like oh yes. Discuss on that. Good. Good. This is a good chance to read some documentation, talk about it, and then use specific experience on something you're you're actively researching to see okay how did the documentation meet or not meet the needs good okay so and which plugin um parameterized trigger plugin good okay good effect. yes parameterized trigger plugin excellent okay so this is a this is part of the improve a plugin exercise mm -hmm. Yes. And it, it will highlight for us one of the challenges that sometimes what we would like to be a trivial task is not a trivial task because there's complication. There are complications. Good. All right. Any other agenda items you want to add, Diraj? Uh, I also want to discuss uh, the same thing about another plugin, the build. Build timeout plugin. Uh, so, oh, oh, good. So you've got two examples that you'd like to use to, as part of that. Okay, good. Hi, yes, Oleg. That's all. Hello, Hi. Oleg. Welcome. Oh. Hi, Oleg. Um, so yeah, you didn't expect me to see at this meeting, but uh, hey, all <laughs> yesterday I got a booster. <laughs> it's great it's that you're good. here. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, all. We haven't met for quite a while, I guess. Yeah, it's nice that you're here. Yes. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm. So so we were just reviewing agenda, Oleg. The topics we've got on the agenda right now include uh, brief news, and then we'll do a review of the weekly change log. Then Diraj has an upper, bound depend upper bounds dependencies question that we're going to use to test the existing documentation and the improve a plugin tutorial. And then Meg has prepared a number of reviews of existing pull requests that uh, we can use for an open PR topic review. Are there any topics you want to add to the agenda, Oleg? Not really, I guess it's already packed. 
uh, yeah, still catching up with all uh, junky stuff because I was basically absent for a few months. Great. Okay. Well, so then by way of news, um, the 2.319.2 security release has been delivered. Uh, the 2.330 security release was delivered. So that was LTS. The weekly security release was delivered. And that one had a complication. Complication due to an unexpected automated build of 2.329. So it was the security team had to do some quick scrambling. We had a Tuesday build that launched when it, it was thought to have been stopped. And so working to fix the root problem that allowed that build to run on schedule when it had been, been intended that it would not run. That's it that I've got for news. Uh, I guess we should do heads up. There are uh, discussions on Java end of life, Java 8 end of life. There are discussions on Internet Explorer 11 end of life, end of support. Oh, rest in peace. Exactly. Or, or just rest, maybe not even in yeah, peace. Yeah, I don't care if it's peaceful or not, just go away. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, and those are continuing. Uh, the plan right on Java 8 end of life is Mark to write the JEP. Uh, we discussed it in the platform SIG last Friday with Tim Jacome, and uh, we'll use the JEP process to, to lay out a plan that we can then discuss alternatives, etc. All right, so next topic then is in this meeting, we like to do a review of the weekly change log. And it's we use the automated change log that's been generated, and then we sanity check the contents of that automated change log. So let's look at the automated change log for 2.331. Okay, so we've got unify labels in plugin manager, remove deprecated terminology labels from the plugin manager. That looks pretty good to me. It's an RFE. Any objections to the phrasing? Looks good to me. Okay. And then we've got the next, which is a bug fix. Increase the width of the forms. And this one is a bug fix that's quite important on the UI improvements. We very much want to get it in. The only thing I see it's missing is it doesn't have a um, full stop at the end of the line, but that's easy to fix. Also, the also, first one, sorry. yes, go ahead. Ollie. It would be also nice to clarify uh, what uh, other forms exactly. Yeah, I was wondering, it's to... a little vague. <laughs> so, so, well, so let's, let's read the, let's look at the pull request then, and let's get the, the ideas for improvement. So it was, it was just a minute. It oops, wrong, wrong repository. Sorry, we got to co do the core, not to. Okay, so the pull request is. Let's borrow that. Okay, so the bug that it's fixing is described here, and it's one of the most popular bugs in the rating system. So the job configuration dialog is too small. And if we look at the image that they show, mm -hmm. notice how it lays out, right? It's, it's not using the full width of the, the editable area or the working area. So what, what recommendations do you have in terms of improving the, uh, the description? Oh, well, I would rather start from uh, looking into the code which particular forms I improved. Because, uh, yeah, the issue is okay, but uh, we need to understand whether on the job configuration forms uh, we changed or any configuration form. 
And the, des the description here says it's the job configuration dialog. We can certainly look at the... Uh, but, uh, so this is a problem statement. So basically what Uli experienced as a user, uh, but uh, for example, the fix could have included actually all forms in Jenkins. So I would recommend to just uh, open uh, file changes and to confirm that uh, the scope of the fix was uh, actually what is reported. Okay. So this is job configuration, uh, then tab bar, which is available for everyone and theme, uh, well, I guess, uh, so theme is likely applying to all forms. So if this just said increase width of forms on job con configuration page, does that do it? Yeah, so basically uh, any uh, Jenkins config uh, container reference would uh, have the same behavior, but uh, the class was introduced only for one entry for job configuration. So I think that uh, the issue description is correct. Okay, all right. So, so what we, that seems like then it should be something like, Increase width of job configuration forms? White screens. Ah, screens. Okay. All right. Yeah. So is, is that what you're thinking, Oleg? Mm. Is that going to be on all devices? I mean, on my phone, I, that might not be a good thing. Yeah. Uh, well, well, it's uh, it's does, the the code change was such that it's smart about device widths, and if I remember right, it was using percentages. So I think it should be even okay on a phone. Okay, good. So me and uh, yeah, this is why I actually suggested uh, white screens explicitly because this is what the scope does. Not okay, so does. job configuration on wide screens. Mm -hmm. Okay, so is it increased job configuration or is it, let me try an alternate, oops, alternate phrasing, expand job configuration to better use wide screens? No, that's not, not saying it. page to display better on wide screens. Uh, ah, okay. I think uh, I'm fine with it first entry. Okay, great. So Meg, you okay, and Diraj, you okay with first entry? The one that's highlighted? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. All right, so we'll save that. Wait a minute, do we wanna say job configuration screen? Uh, increase. Job configuration seems like not a screen. Ah, okay. There. Okay. Now I'm happy. Move on. Okay. Now I've got redundant use of the word screen on screens. Oh. Is it should be job configuration page or page form? That work to me, but I'm careless with these matters. Form that works. Is that good with you, Oleg? Yeah. Okay. All right. Great, so let's go back to the change log then. There were two items in the change log and then there are these that are comments. So documentation is no longer in the wiki. So rephrase the label. So that label, that's a documentation or a, an online help update. I can show you the content if there's worry, should it be in. It was intentionally excluded by the maintainer or the review, the person who submitted it or the, yeah, Daniel Beck said, this is too minor to, to include in the change log. It's not like we have a big change log for this week. Huh? Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah. two, two items so far. Okay, and then Jenkins test harness, we typically don't t include that for, for users, they don't see it. Likewise, the build tool for spotless. And this is a test fix. And this one is an, a dependency update. So for me, it looks like those two for right now are the right things to say yes to. I'm good. So do we have extra spaces before the word remove? Uh, where do you see the word in remove? The first, in the first entry. 
first entry. Uh, somehow I'm not. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. And in that case, it's it's harmless because it will be rendered whether uh, it has single space or two spaces. It will be rendered as a an end of sentence by the web browser. Okay, then that's good. Okay. Awesome. All right, so then I'm gonna go ahead and mark this as approved. Okay, great. And in order to get the next chain, that change that we just made, we have to run an action that drafts the change log. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that now. We don't have to wait for it to finish, but this way it will update it. Okay, so change log reviewed and approved. All right, so next topic then was Diraj and upper bounds dependencies, testing our documentation and the ideas for improve a plugin. Diraj, do you want to share your screen and look at it together? How would you like to approach it? Uh, Yes, I will share my screen in some time. I'm just uh, compiling it and reproducing the error. So in the meantime, I can describe it. So can you go to Gitter and open the Jenkins channel? Oh, oh, sure. Sorry. You bet. Oh, so here, you're, you're okay if I share my screen and we'll look at the Gitter channel. Mm -hmm. Great. Yes, yes. here we go. Good. So here's the Gitter channel. And which, which, which of the feeds, which of the channels? This one only, is you need to scroll up. Uh, okay. There's an image. The first image you see, that is the message we're looking for. Okay, and Jenkins slash Jenkins, this one, okay. Yes, this one. Uh, yes, and can you uh, look at the messages which are in this thread? Sure. Um, can you switch to Gitter? And uh, in the five replies, and yes, this is the one. Okay. The long message of it. So it talks and there's a pull request and it will direct you to the error that I'm seeing. Good. Okay. So, so let's take a look at that. Yes. And the error is in the console output. Yeah, here we go. Okay. It should talk about, yes, this one exactly. So first of all, it looked alien to me. So I, then I read some articles to understand how to read this. So I found out that there is some transitive dependency problem going on, some dependent on one another. So there's like two dependencies which are causing the problem. First one is JNA platform, whose version, version is 4.1.0. And uh, if you look at all those uh, trees that are there, uh, it is pointing out to this version called 5.8.0 as well so there's like different version for the same dependency so maybe so i'm just wondering maybe that's the problem and uh, their second dependency if you scroll down it's for java x annotation api so it has a 1.2 version provided and then 1.3.2 as well mentioned in the below trees so there's like similar problem, same dependency, but different versions. So then I read about how to fix it. Then it talked about that we need to give it like the maximum of the ones mentioned here. And then I was wondering where should I mention them? Because I was hoping to find the mention of these dependencies in the pom.xml file, but I was not able to find them. So the question comes back to whether my observations are correct. And if they are, then how do we, um, uh, fix the uh, or upgrade the versions of these dependencies so we don't see the problem. Right. Okay. So, so the the Jenkins documentation that talks about upper bounds. Let's look at that because I'm accustomed to doing a certain thing, but I think it'd be helpful for us if we look at what the docs say just to be sure. Okay. So. Sometimes you will encounter Maven enforcer errors. A pl your plugin depends on a component in another plugin. 
so yeah, so this is a case where one plugin says it needs version X and another says, no, it needs X plus two or three or some, some more. Yes. And then the solution, okay, so now it says, talks about what the, what the dependencies are. And we might get, it's talking about what the classes of failures are, but here it says the fix is to update the get client plugin version. And I think that's the most common thing that I've seen is the, the usual solution for me in these cases is not to reference where, let's see, let's go back and find that log. So not to include a reference to this final thing in my palm, if I can avoid it, but rather do my best to upgrade the other components that I'm directly dependent on to current versions. And that upgrade often will resolve the problem for me. Oh, so in this case, you're talking about the plugins uh, subversion 2.15.1. So it says to upgrade this. Mm -hmm. At least that's been that's been my experience of okay when I do that that's that's the that's usually a desirable thing to do anyway, and when I do that it can I can get past so that it it doesn't give me these upper bound dependencies errors. The other is I can use sometimes I've been able to use the plugin bill of materials as a way to resolve these kinds of error errors because it uses a consistent set of versions that have been determined by the plugin bill of materials development process. So, so are you okay if we do some experiments here or Oleg, any guidance you want to give? Oleg's much more My expert. I don't see that uh, currently plugin uh, bill of materials should be used by default because it actually resolves a lot of known issues. I'm not sure about this particular one, but yeah, the scope looks promising. What is yes. the concern basically that subversion plugin uh, is not in the best maintenance state, uh, but uh, there was attempt to, to edit uh, the plugin bomb. I'm not sure why it ended. So, so, so I think Oleg's, Oleg's suggestion matches with my experience that now, now Diraj, one of the challenges here is sometimes I'll encounter these messages when I'm trying to upgrade the parent palm version doing something I think is relatively simple. And in order to get that relatively simple thing, I have to also use the plugin bomb and the plugin bill of materials. And so it's, it's sometimes I've had to do combinations of things in order to resolve these. And I think that's okay. Would you be okay if we, if we tried that as an experiment with, with yours? Yes, that would be great. So are you at a point where you could, we could switch and do some editing in your, in your, in your shared screen, or would you like me to, to bring up the plugin and do editing on mine? What's your preference? Um, I think I can share my screen. Okay, great. I'm just trying my best uh, the computer. Uh, so I'm joined from another laptop and I'm working on my personal one. So I'm sharing my personal laptop screen. Okay. Let me. Yes. So about the plugin bomb you were saying, did you explain it on the Hacktoberfest uh, session as well? Did we we or at least we tried to we tried to explain it? In, we've tried to explain it in several different places. Um, Darren Darren Pope and I did a a modernizing Jenkins plugins and tried to explain it. Okay. Yes, 
So are you able to? Yes, I think. So the screen that I'm seeing right now is has has a, a camera view. Oh, let me. So I think your voice was breaking in between. So we so, need to turn so up. the. Yeah. The screen that you're sharing looks like mm -hmm. it may not be the one with your editor on it. Mm, right. Right, right. So it's. Yeah. So this is the one with the build timeout plugin. Very good. Uh, okay, parameter is trigger plugin. Yes, so the, this is exactly where uh, I was getting the error, mm -hmm. and uh, it's uh, this is the form XML file for that plugin, parameter is trigger plugin. Perfect. Okay, so now if we, if in your in your web browser, if you're willing to open well. And I assume this does not have the plugin bill of materials in it. Um, I don't think so. So open up a web browser on this same shared screen to Jenkins.io and let's go find the instructions for the plugin bill of materials. Okay. See, uh, I think it might be really slow. So if it is, can I request you after some time can, uh, to do it on your screen? Sure, I, I am happy to do it from mine as well if, if you would rather, that's no problem. It's parameterized trigger, trigger plugin? Yes, that's true. So plugin form Jenkins. Yeah, so so depend that dependency management, the second link down should be, I think, the one we want. Okay. Whoops, Diraj, the it was the the uh, it's uh, scrolled off the screen up above. Oh no, oh. yeah, up above. Actually, it's uh it's low. Oh, oh, I see. I've okay. opened that one. Yes. Got it. Now you might be able to not. It's still there. I'm actually on dependency management page. Okay, great. So. Hmm. Um, yes. Okay, so this is the Jenkins core bomb. So scroll mm -hmm. downwards. Jenkins plugin bomb. So click the hyperlink that's in that, the C Jenkins CI slash bomb. Okay. Yes. Okay, and here I believe it's in the README. Yeah, yes. notice that that copy and paste is what we need. So copy mm -hmm. that. Back to bomb. Yes. Uh, I'm so sorry. It's very slow. That's okay. That's well, so so while while we're waiting for it, if you're okay, I'll do some some dialogue describing. So what the plugin bill of materials provides us is a a set of versions that have been evaluated together through a series of automated tests to be sure that they are they work together with each other. And so that set of versions that the plugin bill of materials provides means you can simplify your management of versions 
to reduce the number of places where you have to declare a particular version of a dependency. Hmm. Okay, so then um, Maven clean uh, install command that we were running to check if everything works well or not. So even that runs some tests as well, right? It, it does, but for the purposes of this, you can skip the tests by using mm -hmm. minus capital big D skip tests. Okay. Because the, sure. the we don't need to run the tests for to in order to evaluate the the plug-in bill of materials. Hmm. Okay. So should I paste this up with the properties? Uh yeah, I'm I need to look to see where it belongs. Just a minute. I think it can go after the properties, but I I'm just lazy. I go look at examples from others and use figure out their placement. Sure. Okay, yeah, so it's a freestanding section that you could put right after the properties there. And there will be one thing that we need to replace on line 229. You'll see a version with three dots. Delete that. And we need to put in a different version number. And I'll, I'm just going to paste the version number I'm using at the moment into the chat so that we don't have to go do the lookup. Sure. Oh. And be sure you get all of that string, including the, that very last underscore. Sure. So let me switch to. Mark, while he's doing that, would you repeat that succinct little sentence that you gave about what the bomb is doing? Yeah, so well, so the it's probably best if I use the text as it's described. So let me go there just a minute mm -hmm. because I, I suspect I'm probably describing it imperfectly. So the dependency what, doesn't actually tell you. Yeah, so what, what the plugin bill of materials does is it provides us a way to simplify the management of dependencies for common plugins. Uh, as an example, sometimes I want to use a pipeline plugin to create some tests for pipeline, but it's actually requires five or six plugins to do it. And I have to then manage a set of version numbers that match to those things and work to get them all to combine together. What the plugin bill of materials does is gives us a predefined set of version numbers that are maintained and monitored and cared for by automated tooling that maintains the plugin bill of materials. So I'm, I'm basically delegating the hard work of finding a set of matching version numbers to somebody else. Right. So Diraj, have you been able to paste that number into that field? And describe to me this for what you're putting in for the version. I'm getting. I'm going to do a PR when we're done here and fix that documentation. That's why I'm taking notes. Okay. Yeah. So that that number comes from the 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 releases page on the plugin bill of materials. So it's that number is just a, a plugin bill of materials release number. Okay. Yes, then. I think I, you can check the PR and see what I screwed up. So now that I've pasted 
the version. What should we do next? Okay, so now we're ready to, so search in the file for mm -hmm. other tags of version. So less than version greater than. Oh, the tag version. Oh. Yeah, so exactly. So you're looking for that. And let's walk through each of them, taking a look at them. Okay, that one we so won't touch. This is that the one thing. that one we keep. That one stays the same. Okay. That's the parent palm version and it's current. Mm -hmm. Then that one stays the same. Okay. Subversion. Subversion. This is one that we can mm -hmm. probably just and we I think we can just delete that line 29 completely. Let the okay. plugin palm manage the version number four, or the plugin bill of materials manage it for us. So delete the line 29 completely. Nice. Okay, continue the search. Promoted oh builds, I think is included. Let's let's comment this one out because we may need to come back to it. Okay. And oh, oh. yes. Okay, keep going. Conditional build step. And I don't think that one is covered, so I'd leave it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Availability. Availability, yes. So what do you think about this one? So the screen's not keeping up. You said it's awaitility? Yes, yes. Availability. Um, so I would try leaving that one. For, well, I don't know. Okay. Try leaving it for now and let's see. We'll we'll see if we we one of the exercises I do when I when I'm doing these kind of things is I will typically oh mm -hmm. this this already has a plug-in bill of materials. Hmm. Okay, good. All right. All right. So then then we were going to get compilation errors. Let's continue looking. Okay. Then this common lang three. I don't know on that one. There's agent proxy connector factory. And I'm confident those are most likely not covered. So keep going. Mm -hmm. And this is our dependency. Okay. And notice that it's it's alerting us there. Mm -hmm. So take take copy lines two twenty seven and two twenty eight. And let's put those up earlier in the file. Okay. This one. Keep going. No, no, it's we need to find the reference to the bill of materials. Oh. What it is is there's already a plugin bill of materials referenced here. Yes, this one. Hmm. So instead of bomb 2.263.x, we want to put in there the 2.289 version that you had. So we're going to use a newer version. Okay. Yes. And and now this means we've got to go look at the Jenkins.version value. Jenkins.version value. Yes, so it's two. Yeah, so change that to two dot two hundred eighty-nine dot one. Nine dot one. Okay. And should we delete this dependency? Yes. Yes. That? Now that section that we added, we we absolutely want to delete. I think the bomb was. Oh, dot x. You said dot x, right? Never mind. Correct. The bomb is two two eighty nine dot. The bomb is two dot two eighty nine dot x, but the Jenkins dot version has to be a number, and okay. so it's two dot two eighty nine dot one. So Diraj, let's try compiling this and see if it already resolves the upper bounds dependency errors. Sure. Okay. 
So compiling might take time. So do you want to just leave this on compiling? Yeah, why don't, why don't you can go ahead and stop your screen share and mm -hmm. go ahead and do the compile and sure. we'll switch to a different task. We'll look at the pull request mm -hmm. that Meg has reviewed and we'll come back to this if that's okay. Exactly. That's totally uh, fine. Yes. I think. Mm, nice. Great. Okay. So Are then. Oleg, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Meg. I was going to say um, when you're back to looking at the PRs, since Oleg's here, let's jump down the list a little bit. There's two related to terminology. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. I know there's history and all sorts of fun things in there. I saw Tyler's name and. Uh... Okay. Which of those would you like to look at first then? Let's this. See. Um, 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 3362 and 2926. Okay. So 3362. Let's see. I used the wrong, I used the files, but that's okay. Okay. So. So this is terminology, and the question was, so is it, oh, yeah, basically, right. Basically, while it was blocked, um, we discussed it at the governance meeting at the time. Uh, I believe Mark was present there, uh, maybe not, uh, it was long ago. So basically what we concluded is that we cannot say what is the official terminology in Jenkins. Uh, because uh, there is misconnect between Tyler's opinions and the fact of state in the code. And we asked the documentation seek uh, to review the case and come up uh, with the terminology. This is why it was put on hold. Okay, so it's left to, left to our recommendation as, hey, let's, let's use this or that. Uh, well, it's a more generic question. We have basically two te uh, terminology matrices. One uh, is uh, on uh, Jenkins glossary, another one on the CDF glossary. And uh, there is a mismatch uh, between these terminologies. Uh, and well, practically speaking, I have never, uh, yeah, I mostly see people using job than projects, even though project seems to be more official taken at the history of the events. So basically the idea was that the documentation seek and the documentation officer would take care about uh, that and come up with a decision. Uh, but yeah. So, so, so help, help me understand this. So Oleg, the, the more common usage is the word job, I think is what you said, right? Well, it's and, my gut feeling. I don't have statistics for that. Okay, well, and that's something we could, we could test. But your your initial perception is it's probably and now you mentioned the CDF terminology. Is there is there a, a one of these two that's preferred and the CDF terminology one that's not or? Uh, well, uh, the story of the CDF terminology is actually so basically the continuous delivery foundation uh, interoperability seek I believe they tried to, to unify the terminology. They created a matrix of different terms across multiple uh, projects, including CDF members and other CICD tools. Um, and yeah, for Jenkins, there are jobs, uh, uh, etc. And I believe uh, it's basically because of me, because when I was asked what is the Jenkins terminology, I provided uh, the terminology we use the factor. Uh, and uh, hence, there was a misconnect ever since. Okay, so but and so I'm interpreting from that that you would be okay with the switch from the word the 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 word project to the word job because that's the common usage that you perceive. And if we could have data to support that, that would be even better. Yeah, it would be my preference. We can also update the documentation to explicitly reference the synonym. So, for example, if you open the job term, it could uh, reference. Uh, project as a commonly used synonym. Okay. Uh, but yeah. mm, so basically, it's up to whomever. Good. Okay. The mark is basically something for you to coordinate because yeah, it's documentation. It's maybe just making a call because I guess ninety nine percent of the community doesn't really care. Uh, but yeah, for users it might be beneficial to have. It's uh, finalized. Good. All right. So, but 
and and so it, it feels like this is something where my recollection of I think it was Tim Jacome who observed that it's he agreed with your observation that job is the more commonly used term and that project while it may be quote more precise in the code or whatever people say job and they understand each other more clearly when they use the word job so mm -hmm. that well, that makes sense advocate are they being careless and I mean, I've, I, been, I've been I've you know, and there's religious issues here, but I've seen a fair number where job refers to a freestyle job versus pipeline. Is a pipeline also a job? And that project exactly. is either a freestyle or a pipeline. So here I'm you're looking at the advocate. class. I'm not necessarily arguing for that, but. Here you're looking um, at the class structure because, yeah. In theory, job uh, is a high level entity compared to project. But uh, there is actually an interesting case because uh, there is project interface, which is inherited by job. And then there is abstract project uh, inherited uh, from job. So yeah, we just, uh, we are just used to abstract project as a class because it's everywhere, uh, especially for, for the supporting uh, um, some question. In the security matrix, we have a whole bunch of the items that are grouped under job, do those apply equally to freestyle and pipeline? I've never figured that out. It depends because all uh, Jenkins extensions, so they can actually filter themselves to which jobs they apply. So for example, yeah, there are many properties, et cetera, that apply only to abstract projects, only to pipeline, to both of them. Yeah, we still have a lot of other uh, project types which are less widely used. Uh, so I wouldn't uh, rely on the code structure as a source of uh, yeah. the terminology is I mean that's the problem I think the terminology is really sloppy and it's I don't know how we fix that without well so so Meg to the to your point on terminology so I I was I am quite willing to ignore the class structure because I think users in general are not aware of the class structure. Uh, developers may be, but users I think are not. And for me, I'm, that's why I'm still biased towards job, even if the worry is, oh, that may be sloppy. Now, Meg, to your example, to your question, here's, here's an exact text. So in the downstream item here, it's giving a definition of downstream. And it's saying a configured pipeline or job, which is triggered as part of the execution of a separate pipeline or job. And so in that case, it seems like it is acting as though pipeline and job are two distinct entities. So I think it may be lobbying for what you were saying that this may job may mean freestyle or matrix or maven and pipeline is distinct. So, but wouldn't the correction here be to just converge these and say a configured job, which is triggered as part of the execution of a separate job. And job means pipeline or freestyle or matrix or maven. Or another option, again, not sure I'm arguing for this, just it's a theoretic, is that we could put in, we could make the glossary use the proper terminology of project and say that in common discussions, um, project is often used to be synonymous to pipeline or job, or job or pipeline. I don't know if I like that or not. Yeah, see, I, I don't have a, my sense is, well, well, for me, job means the union of pipeline, and, and I'm, I'm exactly opposite to what this is saying. So this is probably me being wrong, but job is the union of pipeline, freestyle, matrix, maven, even external job type is, is a job. Oh, like you're grinning. And that usually means I've made a mistake. Go ahead. Oh, it's, uh, it's okay, uh, though there is um, an edge case because for example, multi-configuration job isn't a job. Oh, multi-configuration pipeline isn't a job. <laughs> and in, in that case, you're, you're, what you're describing, I think, is the inheritance tree, right? You're, you're describing the Java inheritance where what, all I'm doing is describing a conceptual thing, the word 
job means something that Jenkins does. Yeah, right? So conceptually in Jenkins, we have basically job, folder, uh, item as a generic case because you can put whatever crap you want in item. Uh -huh. um, and basically that's it. Yeah, okay. And, and you just described it the way, the way my mental model is that there, there are folders and there are jobs. Now, you, you mentioned one other, and I, I dropped it. What was the... Uh, so, there is item. So, for oh, example, okay. uh, yeah, so it's a generic abstraction level, which actually has multiple users. So, for example, top level item, um, again, speaking code, is the item that can be put uh, on, uh, basically, the job list, uh, can be created as a job. And uh, there are a few examples for that. Uh, so... For example, in Docker traceability plugin, you can create an item for monitoring containers. Uh, what uh, use case may be closer to Mark and the Mac, uh, there is uh, called the Jenkins Operation Center, which actually does a lot of the things uh, through um, items. So for example, mm. shared update center, uh, connect the controllers, uh, shared configuration, all of the things implemented as items. So basically what it means is that uh, you can have them on the, li uh, on the list, but they need the folders, no jobs. And they can be buildable to make it fun. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's a separate story. Okay, so, so this one then needs, if, if I take the conceptual model of Jenkins has jobs, folders, and items, where items may be a folder is an item, a job is an item, and there are other things that are items as well, right? So items is is a is a superset of both folders and and jobs and other things. Did I say that correctly? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Then what's an object? Burn it with fire. <laughs> Honestly, no, no. Mac is right that there is object in class architecture, but I have never seen. It object as a term being used anyway in documentation. Yeah, and I, I don't, I hope it's not in, not mentioned on this page because I've, I, that's at least in, in my Java mind, that's such a generic thing that it's, it's almost a content free word. It's a word that has no meaning. It is so general purpose. Okay. Whoops, I know somebody who's used it all over the place. Okay, all right. <laughs> Somebody fed me Kool-Aid early on, you know, and I just drank whatever they handed me. Well, and, and good for you. That's, we'll, we learn from it and go onward. Yeah. So that's why it would be nice to have terminology because, yeah, there are some misconnects. And, yeah, reducing uh, the terminology just to three terms uh, seems to be beneficial. Because, yeah, the class structure in Jenkins is a pain. Uh, some of the classes have never been touched for years. Uh, so... Well, well, and and I think from from user comprehension, they don't they largely don't care about the class structure, right? They have they have a relatively simple conceptual model, and and if we can use correct terms to describe that model, all the better. Well, we still have um, one uh, challenging case is abstract project uh, because uh, we need a term to explain uh, non pipeline jobs but actually um, other non-classic uh, job types too. And, uh, and there it wouldn't be enough to just say, say the specific job type, this is a freestyle job or a- Because it's maven. not, it's uh, also matrix project, uh, literate project, uh, maven project, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, in my presentations, I can find it, uh, but basically I just do comparison. So pipeline job type is what is not tied to the workspace and the particular node, uh, while abstract project is tied to a workspace and a node. And this is the key difference uh, in terms of APIs. But again, it's API, it doesn't say much to users. And uh, we often struggle answering uh, the questions even in 2022, well, 2021, uh, I guess it's okay, uh, what, uh, uh, plugin type or job type um, the property applies to. And uh, for example, uh, timeout. Uh, so timeout now supports abstract projects and uh, 
pipeline, but it wasn't the case before. And uh, yeah, every time uh, you hit something unsupported or with limited support on the documentation, like NF inject, you start strongly explaining to users what it actually can do. Okay, so thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, I would really like uh, to put abstract project uh, here uh, with a disclaimer that it's rather a slang term or whatever programmer term. But uh, yeah, I think that it's widely used in documentation. Hmm. Okay. All right. And that's because a plugin may support ways of modifying behaviors of a freestyle project, but not a pipeline project and it or not a pipeline it may support ways of modifying a maven maven project type but not a pipeline exactly okay all right so drinking internally apis and extensions are very specific and we still do have many extensions in the jenkins core which don't properly support pipeline because pipeline engine also doesn't properly involve them so there are some listeners etc and the yeah, it's, you always discover the case when you start refactoring whatever old plugin. Uh, but uh, speaking of the terminology, I think that abstract project, it would be important to include uh, it here to some extent because we cannot get rid of this term easily. And, and it's, I'm, I'm back to the, I, would, I was hoping to avoid abstract project as such a programmer concept, but I think what you're saying is it's unavoidable because the separation of implementations means that I need a way to describe pipeline, matrix project, maven project, literate project, freestyle mm -hmm. project, each of those. And there are subgroupings of those. An abstract project is a subgrouping that includes all of those except pipeline. Not all. Not all. Okay. All right, so 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 it's it's even more complicated than I was trying to describe it. Okay. Uh, well, there are some other types, for example, inheritance project, which is also an uh, abstract project, or pipeline, etc. So, yeah, if you want to deep dive, uh, there is a lot of things, uh, but I would uh, like to have abstract project here explicit because it's an edge case. It's used all over the place. And yeah, it's really difficult to explain what it is without uh, going into the code. Got it. Okay, so so we've got more to do here. And Meg, I'm afraid, I'm not sure that we've resolved it yet, but I think the clarity Oleg's given is that it's ours to, ours to work the, the question and bring it to a proposed, hey, let's, let's try to describe this in a way that suits users and and does not obfuscate or does not hide things that are important right okay well like thank you very much I, I i can't thank you enough for being here at this crazy hour of the night for you thank you so much well on the same page i would prefer to be asleep i'm not mac <laughs> <laughs> okay all right yeah, but um, Oleg's really sharp at like four or five in the morning. And the only time Meg's functional at that hour is if she's still up. So well, let's talk again tomorrow when I have a lot of meetings to attend to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then I think we can quickly look. The second one, I think, is almost the same as this. I'm not sure there's a difference. Okay. The 2926. 2926. Okay, so let's take a look at it. I guess, yeah, it's the same, basically, uh, the same story. It, it, it looks, it's it looks almost file, exactly right? the same. Did I, did I, I thought I was, that was exactly what I was seeing before. Yeah. It, okay, they are, there are two pull requests, both touching the same thing in, in much the same way. Right. Okay, all right. So we'll get them and get rid of both of them. Okay. And... Oleg's name is mentioned on a couple of other ones. Do we want to? All right. No, no yeah, there is a bunch of, here. there is, yeah, Jenkins, we just have a huge backlog of things, uh, including various hackathons, etc., cetera, um, which we actually need either to lend or close because um, uh, they stay active, they distract people, they create much conflicts. Nobody actually knows what to do and, I think this is some uh, for the documentation uh, seek to figure out 
what is the approach? For example, here, yeah. Yeah, so this, but it looks like Meg's, Meg's attempting to start down that path of, hey, let's, let's rationalize, let's make these sensible. Okay. Yeah, so some bits uh, are sensible, uh, but well, uh, generally, yeah, it's, just, it's mostly want, words uh, to finish uh, the documentation idea. story. For me, many of these bits are still related to wiki migration because we still haven't migrated all the content. We have the backup side. Now we also try to integrate uh, Jenkins as the way to Jenkins IO, and uh, I'm actually a supporter of that. Um, but yeah, it creates a huge technical depth for us, especially since uh, a Jenkins IO website uh, runs uh, on a legacy engine on its own. So we are still uh, using Evastruct, which is basically not really maintained anymore. Um, Gavin created a pull request a prototype, which would mostly move it to Gatsby, but yeah, the mostly is a keyword. So finally, we end in a couple in a situation where we haven't fully migrated the content to Jenkins IO, but we already need to migrate out. Uh, so yeah, this is just something for the documentation to seek to think about. Uh, but well, I don't have advice except hiring a few documentation developers to sort it uh, in one year, which is, I guess, not the case <laughs> for Jenkins community right now. So yeah. But that's the, that's a kind of the kind of idea. I think that you're you're right. We do need to just spend a significant time reworking. And yes, a switch to Gatsby that would certainly energize energize Gavin and make the site more maintainable. So yeah, all even that. switching to Gatsby is a kind of controversial topic because Gatsby is really nice from the point of view of studying something new. But this is not a technology used by open source projects for documentation by default. Ah. Because what uh, they use, they use Hugo, they use Docuzaros, they use Antara, specific, special engines created for documentation management. And yeah, Antara has a lot of benefits when you go after a mild version documentation, multi-source documentation. Because currently yeah, we still have an issue that uh, Jenkins IO isn't really documentation as code. Um, it's uh, basically a separate repository and we just keep our fingers crossed that uh, plugin developers uh, submit downstream patches when they do something big. Not the case. Uh, so I, yeah, again, I do not really support moving Jenkins IO to Gazebear, even though it's a nice prototype. I would uh, rather suggest that we can see the a standard documentation engine. Like Antara. Mm, okay. Good, good, good feedback. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's also a part of the documentation uh, technical depth. So at right. some point it's going to bite us because even currently yeah, you see a lot of open pull requests. So in the current state, uh, Jenkins IO becomes less and less sustainable. Right, okay. So I'm I'm mostly out of time here, but I wanted to come back to Diraj's situation. Diraj ah, or, yeah. or Meg, are, is there more that we need to do here? No, with... this is just sort of a running list. I'll go back in and rework it. And okay. And Diraj, are oh, go ahead, Oleg. And just one quick thing, in the case you missed, uh, Tracy Miranda is stepping down from the Continuous Delivery Foundation. What it means in practice for the documentation seek and for other Jenkins seek that. Uh, the foundation is basically uh, down to one and a half uh, FTE at the moment, including all things, marketing, product management, uh, keeping lights on, et cetera, et cetera, which means that uh, if there are any dependencies like vocabulary, et cetera, there are just no product program managers who could take care of these uh, demands. So it's also something to keep in mind. Yeah, so, so the guidance there seems like we should just operate independently and asynchronously and not panic if CDF is overloaded and unable to, to help us with something that, that yeah. we might want well, their help. Well, there is one project that we will need to be a part of eventually is CD events specification. Mm -hmm. But CD events specification is all that we accepted as a 
incubating project to the Kandini's Delivery Foundation. Uh, well, I participate in the meetings uh, when I can. Uh, uh, I did some initial mapping uh, to Cloud Events plugin uh, created by uh, Fugul of Summer of Code last year. But uh, it's definitely the topic that we will need, uh, will need more attention if you want to support uh, uh, CD events out of the box. Got it. Think, okay. Yeah, I think it could be a JSOC project again, but yeah, the problem that uh, timeline for specification is also not clear. Uh, well, we want to have preview in uh, one month or two months according to the initial roadmap, but with uh, CDF basically being reorganized, uh, it seems to be less probable. Okay. All right. Um, Diraj, are you at a point where we, we you would like to switch back or should we conclude the session, let everybody disconnect and you and I will just pair program on your, your question. How would you like to approach it next? Yes, I think that would be great if uh, we uh, debug the problem with one-on-one -on -one session so that others don't have to go through this unbearable process. Okay. Uh, so I'm... I, I apologize, I need to take a brief break. So if you'd be mm -hmm. okay, if in about five minutes, you and I could reconnect and, and we'll just go through it together, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Totally works. Okay, Sounds and fun. I'm gonna write up a little PR later tonight that captures what I saw, just a couple of sentences, but I, this thing of, you know, it's just like, see the repository is not really useful documentation. I think a couple sentences there. And then you guys can fix anything that I missed. This is on the plugin bomb. Yeah. Okay, great. Cool. Also, nice to meet you all. Like, uh, this is the first time we are meeting, right? Yeah, well, this meeting time wasn't particularly convenient for me. <laughs> uh, right. yeah. I, uh, it's, 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 it's now 8.30 a.m. in India. I don't know what could possibly be bad about that, Oleg. <laughs> well, it's uh, 4 a.m. in my time zone. Oh, yes. yes. His time zone, it's crazy. Oh, it's, yeah, years. sorry, completely insane. Well, it's okay. Yeah, my shoulder is just hurts too much, so I cannot fall asleep anyway. Oh. So uh, we can continue asynchronously. Um, yeah, one thing that currently I receive a lot more GitHub pings than I can process. Uh, so if you need something urgently, etc., don't hesitate to drop an email. It's, well, not something we usually advise uh, for the Jenkins community, but yeah, right now I'm still a bit overloaded. Yeah, well, thank you for all that you do, Oleg. Much appreciated and and good luck in, in all the things. Okay. Yeah, I'll probably follow up with you later. So I guess time for, uh, to finally sync up. Right. <laughs> all right. And Oleg, we could say vice versa. You're free to just shoot if you don't have to time to show up to shoot something to us would you guys straighten this out absolutely if you've got mm -hmm. async email is certainly welcomed you're no problem okay. well we still have uh, jenkins well coming into jenkins io so yeah i will likely use that if it's not urgent okay okay Great. so yeah have a nice day evening morning i'm sure um, yeah see you all right okay. Okay. okay, so Diraj, you and I will connect. What I'll do is I'll probably just send you a message through Gitter to, mm -hmm. to a Zoom link that I'll establish okay. here in just a few minutes. Okay, so we'll leave I, this meeting and I'll, then we'll rejoin after. Your right, message. we'll end this meeting in about five minutes. I'll, I'll post a, a link to a new meeting and we can record that new meeting as well so that if, okay. if we find it's helpful, we're welcome mm -hmm. to post it later. But, but I think it'll be more effective if it's just you and me and we... We can then decide, okay, should we put it on Mark's computer? Or should we put it on yours, et cetera, and talk through it? Hmm. Right. All right. Uh, so thanks, everybody. Meg, thank you very, very much. I'm going to go ahead and end this, and I'll be back with you in about five to 10 minutes, Diraj. Okay. Shut and up. I should have a PR by tomorrow. So thank Bye. you, Meg. Thanks very much. Yes. Bye, Bye Meg.